Hi there guys, my name is Taylor and I'm from NetBeansTutorials.com and in this video we're going to dynamically generate an array. The user is going to determine the length of the array and the values it will contain and enter them in a prompt and then our code will compile and um, compile those numbers and create an array out of them and then it'll print it to the screen. Okay, so before we can get started again I said they determine the length of the array and our first step is actually to declare the array. So we need to get that information first and foremost. So we're going to save that under string r and do a little prompt that's going to ask them what is the length of our array? Okay, and then our next step is to save that r that we just made into the length of our newly declared array. And it seems that I've made something that's an error. What does it say? Incompatible types. Well, it says, hey, Taylor, you can't save a string as the length of an array. It needs to be a number or an integer. And, well, it is a number, but the code doesn't quite see that. So I'm going to save this. Instead of as a string, I'm going to just type int. Let's see if that works. Well, then J Option Pane says, hey, man, I can only save this as a string. So the solution to this since this can only use a string and this can only use an int, is we use a parse tool. And what that means is we're going to declare a variable that's called int number. That is an integer. And then we're going to parse r for the integer value it contains. It's going to look through r, find a number, and save it under our newly declared int number. So we type integer.parseInt r. And then we type our newly declared number as the correct length. Now everybody's happy. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, our next step is to ask the user for each individual value. So we're gonna have to have separate prompts, one for every length, I'm sorry, one for every value of our array. And we're gonna achieve that by using a for loop. It's gonna start its first iteration of i as zero, then it's going to check to make sure that it hasn't run too many times by saying that it's less than the number of values in our array. And then we're going to do the standard I++. And now what that for loop is going to achieve is it's simply going to run its containing code the number of times that there are values in your array. So it's going to be equal to the number that the user typed in in this prompt. So it's going to have that many prompts. And then the next step is to create the actual prompt. It's going to say array i is equal to integer.parsent j option pane.show input dialog null enter the next next value in your array. Okay. And then it just saves it under array i. And that's basically it. That's all it takes. But let's go ahead and print our array values to the screen to make sure that it's really doing its job. The value entered was, and then we'll do array i. All right. Looks like we did pretty good. Let's check it out. What's the length of our array? Five. Well, our first integer is going to be 1, then it's going to be 2, then it's going to be 3, 4, and 5. All right, we did it. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will address them. Thanks for watching.